And greeting cyberspace. Welcome to the Bigfoot News for today's day, June 28th, 2024. I'm your host, your guide, the Squatch Detective Steve Gold, along with my co-host right down there, Mr. Chris, Steve, the man, Bennett. It's good to see you, bud. How are you good doing to today? Good, good, good. I heard yeah. that you went to the uh, skeleton adjuster today. How's that neck? <laughs> uh, we're, we're doing pretty good, actually. So Good. good. Uh, neck is feeling a lot better. That is um, good news. Yeah, we we didn't have a show last week uh, just because we it was it, uh, I, a lot going on last week. The, the whole this whole week has been nutty for me, um, and usually the last week of the month kind of goes crazy because you know when you're when you're doing the stuff I'm doing, you're working on financials for next month and getting your right. everything ready to go, and uh, it was just overwhelming. And um, so we we do have uh, that to say, but uh, today is an interesting day, Chris. Yeah. Every this day is, is uh, interesting when you think well, about it. Is, uh, now, mind you, we did not advertise this show tonight on Facebook or anywhere. We just did it on YouTube. and um, Oh, well, got quite a few people in the chat. Hey, guys. Yep. And that's, that's why and everybody's wandering in because everybody knows that we're here. on. Um, but anyway, uh, June 28th, 1919, 125 years ago today. My father was born. Oh, wow. 125. Yeah. And and when you think about that, that's like mind blowing. Yeah. That's uh you that's know amazing. Uh, yeah. No, I'm sorry, 105 years. Pardon my French. 105 years, not 125, 105 years. Yeah. Um, so uh, just wow. And when you think about it, it's like uh, the, uh, how long is my this generation stretched from my father to me? And you know what? I, I found out some very interesting things when I was doing ancestry that my my grandfather was born in. Um. Uh, he was thirty five when my father was born. Yeah. So if you go back thirty five years minus nineteen, I, my my father and my grandfather was born in eighteen eighty five, I believe. Yeah. So my grandfather is born, you know, a hundred and like almost a hundred, 140 years ago. 19th century. That's pretty cool. Almost 140 years ago. Yeah. And uh, yeah, that's just, it's mind blowing. Um, unreal. But anyway, we have got uh, quite the show in store for tonight. What's been new with you, Chris? Oh, not a lot. Just been uh, trying to get some stuff done. Uh, had, uh, the washing machine tore apart again, <laughs> ended up, uh, messing up my back for a couple of days there because I, oh, no. that thing. but, uh, you know, it's either, you know, take it apart and repair it or go buy a brand new one. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm a little bit too cheap to go buy a new one. So if I can fix what I got, that's what I'm going to do. <laughs> frugal, frugal, frugal. That's the word frugal. I'm a little bit too frugal to buy a new one, so yeah, we'll see if we can't repair the old one. So, uh, um, yeah, yeah. What what can I say? I, I was going to make a joke, but nah, I'm not going to make a joke. Go ahead. Um, Let me no, ask. no, because we 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 don't do politics on this channel. No, no. But uh, and that way we avoid stuff like this. <laughs> yeah. Um but anyway, uh we do have uh let's do our roll call for the night. Yeah. yeah. And uh okay, first in chat tonight was Lance Windsor. Hello, Lance. Yes. Good to see you, man. Roy Langley, Sandra Piper, what's Roy. going on? <laughs> Buttworm is in the house. Hello, Buttworm. Um, Walter Cole, good to see you, sir. Jen, you. what's going on? The bouncer in the house. Um uh, Don Mao Jr. in the house. 
And um, Angel Nolan, Jeff D. Angel? Smith. Jeff D. Little Roy. Little Kill Roy, Roy quit. quit. <laughs> don't quit on us. Little Kill Roy, come on. Man. I don't think he is. He's having fun. Um, and that's what we got in right now, the, the talkers. And, uh, you know, we see uh, Roy. Roy, welcome. Uh, you're new to the chat and greetings and welcome. Welcome to the yeah. family. And and uh, we usually start with a little warm up like this for a few minutes. And uh, then we get into business of the evening. And I'll tell you, we, we have two stories for tonight. Not, not, not three. We usually do three and take about 10 minutes per or 20 minutes per, per uh, thing. But, um, one of them in lieu of a video, yeah. So. In, in lieu of periods of uh, rambling and and um, uh, name calling each other and um, um, dead silence, uh, we will uh, we will press on with the show. Uh, gotta say, uh, you know, and for those who don't know, it's on the channel. I was on the blonde and booze. And it's B O O S, not B O O Z E. Blondes and Booze uh, podcast last night. Uh, I did uh, about an hour, a couple hours with them last night. Yeah. yeah. And a lot of, uh, we can talk about that a bit. A lot of good discussion. Good yeah. Yeah. Um, and I, I don't know, you know, a lot of times, and, and I, and I got to predicate, I, I want to predicate this. This is by no mean a, a, a slam on the, the host of that show. Um, but a lot of times, you know, every once in a while, I get people, oh, we, you know, don't, don't, don't use names, don't use names, don't use names. And everybody, for some reason, I only name drop on my own channel. Yeah. I'll take the heat. I don't name drop when I go on other people's channels. It's not, not respectful. Yeah. Unless the host asks for it, you know, right. you know, as the host says, hey, you can say whatever you want, uh, you know, uh, and in that case, then I'll, it's okay if I talk about this, but I, I'm not a... I don't know why people uh, necessarily think I'm a, I, I go off the rails sometimes because I don't. I only do that on my own channel. But when I, I've always behaved myself on other channels, except when it came to one person on another show when he was, you know, belonged to an internet group. And that's how we knew all about a particular geographical area. <laughs> so, so I don't know. I, I don't know if I, if I'm that, um, am I that, Chris, am I that much of a, uh, a fire starter? No, I don't think so. I don't think so. I mean, you know, you do get a little passionate sometimes. Uh, yeah, but I mean, when know. I go on other shows, I always behave no. myself. Yeah, I, I think you, you 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 behave respectfully, and uh, you know, you, you don't uh, you don't go in there and start a fire. No, I, I mean, here I, I I take the tie off here. You know what I mean? I take yeah. the coat yeah. off and tie off, and I'm able because our audience is our audience, and uh, I I would give them no less of everything. You know. Well, yeah, this is within home. reason. Within right, reason, is, yeah. This, this is home. You can be, you know, a little more right. the way you want to be at your home. And, uh, and when you go somewhere else, you know, you're on your best behavior. Right. And you know that's why. And, and I'll make another uh, comment on comments. And for those who post comments, I appreciate all the great comments that you guys have been leaving. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm going to get back to this week and start, you know, uh, commenting back and replying to them. Uh, I took a little time off this week. Sometimes you need that just to clear your head and get focused. And the funny thing is, is the beginning of the week, I, I'm working on a new series for the channel. Um, but as far as comments go, uh, you know, they are moderated because we do. Uh... <laughs> really? Good for you, Roy. Yeah, and welcome. Welcome to all our lurkers. We right. appreciate you guys. Um, I do, too. But I moderate the comments because there's just too many. Um, occasionally, we get a wing nutted comment, and I don't like people putting up false information on a comment, right? <coughs> or something. You know? Something. And I, I, I've called people out. I, you know, I'll look at it. Okay, if they've said it respectfully, but a lot of times when people want to argue, they get their keyboard muscles up yeah. and they start. You don't know this, and you don't. Know, I'm sorry, you're not going to. Cause this is mine. My members, of course, I will post what you say ad hoc um, because you guys make this channel. The subscribers, same thing. But when I get flippant drive-by comments by people that are insulting, insulting to the audience, they're funny. They're funny. And, and there's times I just want to beat back. And, and on the comments, 
<laughs> um, 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 but uh, so I let every once in a while, I'll let an insulting comment go by unless it's full of profanity. Then we, we delete it. So that's why sometimes, yeah. And, and, and it's a rule. It's, there's a rule, you know, they, they make a snarky comment. Okay. Listen, we can talk about this. We can talk about this respectfully without name calling, without any of that. Um, well, you know, with any YouTube channel, there, you're going to get the people that come in there that are a little bit trolly, you know, right. and yeah, sure. that's, uh, that's understandable. But yep. as long as they're kind of respectful, that that's fine. Right, right, exactly. Yeah. And, and uh, you know, I, some channels on YouTube, you know, love that stuff. Yeah. They will. Yeah, they they make videos on just the trolls. Um, <laughs> no, we were trying to run something that's educational and fun and and family oriented for the most part. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, PG thirteen with an occasional slip to R an R rating every once in a while. Yeah, but, we, we tr- try to keep it family friendly. You know, uh, uh, Robert. Uh, oh, thank oh, you, Robert. Welcome. Bye. Yeah, Robert. I, oh. I, I noticed that too. It seemed like when Steve gets on a show somewhere, they always they always move him towards the paranormal stuff too. Which Steve, well, you know, he's he's been a paranormal investigator, and that's what he does. He, he looks at mystery and tries to figure out what what's causing sure. this, what's doing that. And uh, sure. I can enjoy that too. I and love I, mystery, right? And you know, if um, you know what, I did forget one article for today. You know, there is a new photo out from Loch Ness this week. Crystal, there is. There is. So we'll we'll get that we'll get that to you Sunday night. I, I just real I remembered that. I, I caught that. Not on, you know, I get Bigfoot alerts, so I don't get the log now. And I happen to be scrolling on something, and it was one of the London newspapers that popped up in my feed that said something about a new one. I looked at it, interesting. Um but yeah, so I, I you know, I, I always say this, listen, I have you know uh, I can't do this without the subscribers and I can't do this without the members. And I'm not going to let them uh, be subject to profanity and, 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 you know, bad talk and false information and people who want to disagree with me for the sake of disagreeing with, Hey, hello. Good to see you. Welcome. 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 We got all these new subscribers and I want to welcome everybody to the channel too, because we have a lot of fun and we've been a boom in, in, in subscribers lately. And that's awesome. And I appreciate all of you. But I don't want to expose our our people to false information. One of the big things we like to do in this channel is tell the truth and get the truth out there. And sometimes, uh, you know, somebody will post false information in in a comment or things that are not fact-based. And, uh, you know, uh, like people come on, oh, I know Bigfoot cloaks. Well, what's your evidence for that? Um, And then they and then they digress into a name calling spat. So then their posts get deleted and they get banned from the channel. From commenting, and that that happens uh, every so often. Uh, if I do an expose on somebody, like all of a sudden uh, uh, the uh, the the girl, the woman that's in in the county jail or in, in prison for the attempted murder, I'll give you another good example. Oh, of that. Yeah, we'll get, yeah. Right, I got one comment from a woman saying, "You don't know the whole story. You uh, we don't hear her side of the story." I'm like. Really? You know what? I'm not even going to post that because you know what? A jury of 12 heard her story. Yeah. yeah. Right. Either that or she pled out and then she admitted to it. So, right, yeah. so it, uh, I, I, listen, I, I'm not the judge. She's already been judged legally. So, and, and that's why, I, and uh, there was a couple of hits like that. And of course they were from the Stanlings, the, you know, Todd Standings followers, right. which, you know, for some reason it's either him with a sock account or he's got some people that just, defend him for for no reason whatsoever um so i don't know um and you know what if, if anybody smacks talk me or smack talks me on another show or another channel i i don't want any of our members going after them just let me know give me a little nudge and i will deal with it uh or i i will send one of my minions to deal with it but i don't need an audience to do that we can i don't want them to get in trouble i don't want them to get in the middle of something um like our, our recent row uh, with uh, the guy from the UK who Mutt, um, who just decided to one day start nonchalantly attacking because he put out a hoax video. <laughs> he hoaxed the video. So um, yeah. 
with, you know, uh, you're a hoaxer. You just put yourself in my aim, my, my, my scopes. And that's what it is. So anyway, let's get on to the first story of the night. So uh, this. Amen, is, Jessica. Right. I, I agree, Amen. Jessica. I, I agree. It's just. Yep. Um, and welcome, Jessica, by the way, as well. We see a lot of new names. This is awesome. Um, so anyway, uh, this one's near and dear to my heart. Of course, this tonight's the Bigfoot News. We do this show for an hour. And uh, we do our two-hour show with guests usually on Sundays. Unless we have a really good juicy story or, uh, you know, a deep dive we're doing. But but tonight we're doing the Bigfoot News. And this story is near and dear to my heart. Um, I just wish somebody had called me and told me that was going on. That was the only upsetting part to me. It's like, uh, no, nobody told me this was going on. Oh, well, you should. Yeah, they should have called you up so you could have been there when the help them commemorate. Uh, it. I, I, I agree. But it is what it is. Um. So uh, this is uh, this is um, written by Tim Benall for Coast to Coast AM. Uh, I was just on um, Tim's uh, podcast uh, a couple of weeks ago too. We we did, uh, and I was also on the Bigfoot and More podcast with Dave Wilbanks. So uh, he's out and about last weekend. So uh, we're going to probably catch up with him and see how his stuff is going on. Yeah, that'd be great. Um, but uh, that that was primarily talking about my new book, The Psychology of Bigfoot, A Guide to Understanding Bigfoot Claims, and um, which is doing very well in sales and will be offered for the first time in the general public uh, at the, uh, Logan, Ohio, at the Hocking Hills Bigfoot Conference right. and Festival. So, so anyway, this uh, article again is by Tim Binnell, and it says, An upstate New York town that has become somewhat synonymous with Sasquatch saw its connection to the creature celebrated with a newly unveiled historical marker that declares the community to be a Bigfoot sanctuary. The village of Whitehall was put on the proverbial cryptozoological map by way of a significant series of Sasquatch sightings that occurred there back in 1976. They actually started in 74 and extended into 1976. This little note on that coupled with long-standing native american accounts of the creature as well as subsequent reported encounters with such bipedal beasts the community has be has come to be considered proverbial bigfoot country by many fans of the famed cryptid which the town has embraced with a zeal in a myriad of ways Thanks to the efforts of local researcher Paul Bartholomew, Whitehall passed an ordinance in 2004 that designated, imagine that, 20 years ago, that designated Bigfoot an endangered species and made it illegal to hunt the creature within the borders of the village. A few years later, the town passed another resolution that named Sasquatch their official animal. All the while, several statues, as well as Bigfoot-themed businesses, popped up throughout the community. The connection to the cryptid name into full bloom with the creation of the enormous, enormously popular Whitehall Sasquatch Festival and Calling Contest, which I am see the calling contest every year, um, which serves as a full-on celebration of the creature that has garnered national media attention thanks to the unique competition featuring participants unleashing their beast belly. <clears throat> Last week, Whitehall's admirable appreciation for the cryptid was recognized with the unveiling of a new historical marker from the Pomeroy Foundation, the organization aimed at preserving community history as previously produced similar plaques celebrating local legends and lore such as purportedly haunted bridges in North Carolina and Lake Champlain's famed monster champ. The Whitehall marker, which was installed next to a Bigfoot statue near the, uh, near the town's grandstand, declares that the community is a Bigfoot sanctuary and reads for centuries local story tell of sightings of giant hairy beasts that walk upright and leave huge footprints. Local law protects them. So, so it is illegal to shoot a Bigfoot in Whitehall. Yes. That's an ordinance. Wow. It's more. Yep. So, uh, yep. And that, um, the statue up there uh, that you see to the left is a wooden chainsaw carved statue. I think it was placed there in 1994. Um, it was last year and had to be carted away and repaired because, you know, age and rot, which, you know, it sits right. out in the elements and it's made of wood. I think they varnished it now, so it mm. doesn't. Um, well, uh, it looks uh, pretty human-like there. Uh. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he... <laughs> 
And uh, the, the uh, late sculptor uh, Joaquim Dominguez uh, was the sculptor of that, and he passed away several years ago, unfortunately. But uh, what a what a great piece of work he did! Oh you know? yeah, how in the world could anybody do that with a chainsaw? I mean, look at that. Yeah, I mean, just intricate amazing. detail along the face and the nose. Yes, so. yep, absolutely. And that that statue's been sitting there for years, and. Um, you know, so now they got the, the marker next to it, which is awesome. Yeah. Um, and that is going to be very close to where my booth usually is, or my tent, I should say, well, and during the Whitehall Sasquatch Festival. I'm just to the, usually I'm just to the right or to the left of the staircase, and that is just to the left of the staircase. Well, going make up sure to the, you get a picture of you standing next to the new marker. That absolutely. Absolutely. Next time so, when you're in the area. Uh, yep. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, so... Uh, as far as that's concerned, uh, I, I think that's awesome. Any kind of uh, Jessica says, uh, didn't uh, New York State declare Bigfoot and Champ protected? Uh, that's no. Yeah. Unfortunately, New York State does not recognize Bigfoot as a creature. Uh, you talk to Ancon, and they will give you a glaring letter, as our uh, former guest Peter, uh, our prior guest, I should say, uh, Peter Weimer, found out uh, when he wrote about possibly getting some legislation going to protect it. New York state wrote, wrote him back with a scathing letter that says such a creature does not exist in New York and likely anywhere else, something similar to that. So yeah, that was uh, really, uh, um, no bueno. Um, uh, but then again, uh, I've had an Encon guy come up there, uh, you know, when we were doing the monster quest, Kirk Koga, who made the brilliant statement of these things existed, people would be seeing them. People are seeing them. Right, yeah, they do. And they don't tell you guys because guess what? You laugh them out of the... the, the uh... Yep. Probably shouldn't right. tell anybody you saw Bigfoot. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so that is a little bit, um, how should I say it, bizarre that... You know, he would make a statement like that that made no sense whatsoever. Um, and, and like I say, you know, uh, uh, again, going back to confirmation biases, that's what they do. They're biased. Right. And in Whitehall, and, one of the first witnesses was a police officer. So. Um, Yeah, well, not one of the first. He was the first public one. Okay. If, if you know the history of the area well, uh, and the reason why he was out there was because people were seeing them on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. started in 1974 with Cliff Sparks seeing one on, uh, I forget what hole, uh, but seeing one on the, uh, you know, walking across the green while he was tending to the golf course late one night. Uh, mm -hmm. His family had also been hearing these strange bellows that were coming from the, the forest. Now, mind you, Cliff Sparks, is, you know, he passed away a, a number of years ago, but mm -hmm. he wasn't a young guy. He'd lived there all his life, was a businessman in town and knows that area. So he's like, something's wrong here. And then at the same time, people were reporting uh, Bigfoot sightings all along a bear road, which is the main, which is not a main road. It runs parallel to U.S. Route 4, which goes into uh, Vermont. Um. But uh, in it springs, goes through mostly a wooded area there, doesn't it? But I, I remember looking at on yeah. Google. Yeah, uh, it goes through a wooded area going, you know, on one side. And on the other side, there's farmland. Yeah. Um, and then the farmland. And then you'll see Route 4, uh, you mm -hmm. know, traveling parallel. But <clears throat> one other strange little note. I don't know if you've ever heard of the uh, religious sect, the Seventh-day Adventists. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. That was founded right there on Bear Road. Wow. Right. Learned something so, today. Good. so if you ever uh, tell the recounting of the, and I, this blew me away when I first found this out. Um, in 18 something or other, I think it was 1886. Uh, as the story goes, the Seventh Day Adventists, you know, gathered in upstate New York to await the arrival of the second coming. And it didn't happen. Right, obviously. Um, where do you think they met? In, what field do you think they were in upstate New York? They were right mm -hmm. there at the. They were right there at the William Miller Chapel, which is the home of the Seventh Day Adventists. So, yep, just a, a stone throws away from all these Bigfoot sightings. Wow, now that's cool. <laughs> I, I, it's really a little piece of innocuous history, but there is historical markers all in that area too. Um, yeah. So, uh, 
Try you, Ninja. Good to see you, man. <laughs> Hey, Nikki. Oh, everybody's flying it now. Jessica, yeah, everybody. Angel. Well, I, I, I agree, Jessica. Just like there's no mountains in, in uh, New York. Uh, yeah. I, I myself yeah. uh, am a, a firm believer that's kind of hokey, too. I, I, I actually knew uh, a, a, a retired police officer that was like, I, I was having coffee with uh, another uh, a, a retired SWAT because, again, uh, if they, I know a lot of the retired cops because I used to be a medic in the city of Troy a lot of, you know, back in the day. And, and, uh, so every once in a while I'll, I'll end up having coffee with a couple of the retired ones. And we were sitting around and we were, we were relating a Bigfoot story and he goes, you know what? And then one other cop who was there drinking coffee with us was like, yeah, you want, you know, I got my trail cam the other day and he showed me this video and it was a friggin' mountain lion, um, with cubs. Yeah, but, so, you know, they, they always kick back on this thing. They say, oh, well, there's no breeding population. Well, it don't matter. There's a freaking mountain lion there, okay? <laughs> came, came from somewhere. It may be the last one in the whole state, but it's there, right? It's there. It may, it may be some knucklehead got one from an exotic pet store mm. or a pet deal, mm. and then it got loose on him, and now he right. can't say nothing because... Yeah. But uh, but the, the sightings of, of big cat mountain lion in New York is rampant. And there's a big difference. I mean, I've seen bobcat. Not not for one second would I mix up a mountain lion with a bobcat. Yeah. Bobcat has oh, that. Oh, oh, yeah. Kind of has like a lynx type of face where it, it's kind of got bushy, pointy whiskers uh, or fur, you know, to its chins. And uh, it's, yeah, it yeah, looks like a diamond head. It's got a diamond head. And the mountain lion's got a tail. like you know. Right, right, right. <laughs> Right. Uh, definitely not a bobcat. Right. Definitely not a bobcat. Um, uh, excuse me. This bobcat prefers his formal name. It's a Robert cat. <laughs> Robert. Yeah, um, but, you know, they they got into that around uh, Mammoth Cave uh, several years ago. They got some reports, and, of course, the, the, the director was saying, no, no, there's, there's no mountain lions here. There's no mountain lions here. Until finally somebody that works at the main office came into his office wide-eyed and said, there's a mountain lion in the parking lot. <laughs> nice. There's a mountain lion in the parking lot. Okay. Well, like I like I said, it's a weird day in the neighborhood for me. I, I get uh, I'm pulling in today. One of my neighbors stops mm. uh, before you know he, he backs up. He goes, "Hey, just to let you know, be careful of the dogs. There's a rabbit fox running around here. Saw oh. him in the yard during the day. Its oh. eyes had it looked mangy. and eyes had conjunctivitis." And uh, he looked at it. It was looking at him. He slapped the side of the door and it just looked at him. It wasn't afraid of him. So he said, just be careful. Okay. We we leash our dogs. We don't let our dogs out anyway. Even though we have a shepherd, we don't put them on leads and let them out. We just walk yeah. them out. Do their, their house dogs. Especially the, the lazy one over here. The assistant. He's well, guarding yeah, be, that chair very, very diligently right now. But, be, be careful with the small one. Uh, yep. The big one could probably take care of itself. But yep. uh, got to watch out for Watson. <laughs> yeah. Well, luckily they both had their rabies shots, but yeah. Um, yeah. Never a good thing to have a rabid animal in the area. Well, or the even potentially the rabid. Yeah. The problem is you get one rabid animal and they tend to get other animals infected right. too. Yeah, so exactly. So we'll see what happens. Um it's not the first time I've heard it's happened here. First time since I've lived here, and of course I'm going on my second year here. So hey. Uh, Jay also said he's uh, going to retire from aging. He's tired of getting old. He's going to retire from aging. I hear uh, you. I'd like to I, try that too, but yeah. I'd like to try that. Okay. Are we ready for our next story, Chris? Oh, yeah. Yeah. So I, I, I'm going to put this up here just so nobody gets a smart idea to, to go ahead and, um, and try to... Uh, Copyright strike this. Uh, it's actually a, it, the channel that originally ran it was uh, a channel that um, does not really have a great reputation amongst uh, legitimate researchers. And it's the Sunny Vader channel. Uh, but this, the thing this, is, it's not his video. Yeah. This video and, uh, was also posted at 93.7 The Dog or something. So. Right. <laughs> right. 93.7 The Dog. And this story the came dog. out yesterday. It says, uh, one of the world's best mysteries is the elusive creature we call Bigfoot. And now an oil field worker thinks he may have captured the creature on camera. Ooh. A video on YouTube shows an oil field worker checking on equipment. 
in the snow and his visit to a site is all documented documented by a dash cam that was mounted on his work truck. Smart. Well, as he drives away from the site he visited, you see a dark figure standing in the woods while covered in snow. According to the video, which you can see below, which you're going to see in a second, part of it, the worker mm-hmm. never noticed it until he went home. He went back to review the footage he captured. Ooh. Note. Was Bigfoot near the man while he was walking the sn- in the snow, or was this just a dead spot in the woods? Check out the footage from the dash cam and let us know what you think. Well, we're going to let you know what you think right here on the show. Oh, yeah. Let me mention here that it is believed Bigfoot may have been spotted in another area not too far from there, here. In a previous sighting, the creature was reportedly holding a juvenile Sasquatch at that time. The footage was shot near Nordeg or Alberta. So... Canada, yeah. Canada, yeah, uh, yeah. You know who's neck of the woods. Yeah. That's if they're around Leon, isn't it? Leon and uh, Justin Scherpensky from Mountain Beast Mysteries. Yeah, Justin, yeah, that's right. And um, um, and um, Todd Stanley. Oh, right. <laughs> wah, 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 wah. Anyway, um, but anyway, let's take a look at this video and uh. Let me just predicate this real quick. Um, again, it's on a que- it's on a channel that, that's had a lot of questionable activity on it over the years. Um, uh, is this a Bigfoot video? I don't know. It has some pros and some cons. Um, fact is, is the the guy did give all the information out. So I mean, there's no, uh, and I'm not going to get into the, the deep information because this is really such a quick video. It doesn't take this big huge yeah. dive into it. But what I do find strange is this. Why would you review your dash cam video? Well, you why? Know, it could be a, could be a work thing. It could be a work thing. Yeah. He's an oil field worker, so it could be a, yeah, it could be a work thing. No joke. I don't know. Well, maybe, maybe he's trying to prove it, but it just seems weird. It's such a quick move that I don't know. I, I, I just don't know. I, I have a problem with, with you know, that, but maybe not. Maybe you're right. Like I said, this is not certain. That's my one suspicion about that. It's not a tell-all. It's not a, 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 a smoking gun. Right. It's just... Um, so let's get on to the video, and here it is. Yeah, yeah. Let's watch this. Okay, don't blink. Yep. Now, again, we'll, we'll show it one more time. So uh, you'll see it right coming into view right there, allegedly. And here it is in slow motion. And uh, you'll see it right into view from the left, right about there it is right there. And it's going off to the right. It's a pretty dark spot there in the woods. It, is. it definitely is. Um so I, I don't know what to think. Let's take a look at, you know, what some quick work I did with it. I captured a still of it, and I I basically enhanced the color a bit, lightened it up a little bit. <laughs> and let's see. So that's what we have right there. Don says tree. <laughs> that's I, possible. I, I, that's possible. I tend to see. Here's the issue with this. There is a branch that's in front of it. But yeah. what I have a problem is, is did the Sasquatch just stand there and let all that snow get on top of his head without moving? Uh, no. Uh, so. No. So to me, there is no movement. There is snow on top of this item. And it mm-hmm. looks like there's, you know, an inch, at least an inch or two on the head. Yeah. Well, allegedly, what's the head? So to me, it looks like it could be a stump. It, yeah, it could be a. Um, well, a, one uh, of the things that, that, of course, you know, once we're looking at this, you got to be careful not to let pareidolia have its way right. with you. But, uh, you know, you can see an arm there. You can see some muscular tone around a leg uh, going down if you're looking at it that way. 
but also the thing that it's holding in its arms appears to be flat. The, 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 if it's if it was a young one in its arms, the top of the head looks like flat. Maybe it's not a like young a chainsaw one. Cut. Maybe it's not a young one. And that does look like a chainsaw cut. You're right. Yeah. Uh, but what I find interesting is you have snow on the ground, right? Yes. Look where the feet are. Now, it's one deep. would think, why is there not snow kind of built up on it? Well, yeah, you really you know. can't see the feet, though, Steve. I mean, we're probably looking at it around uh, a foot or so off the ground or maybe more. Can't really see it. Yeah, it's a yeah. You're right. In the way, so. right? It could be a branch. You're right. You're exactly right. And you see, that's how the mind plays it, right? Now I see what you're <laughs> saying. Yes, it's in front, right? <laughs> this is a good question from OPR three fifty seven. Exactly. Yes, I would be walking around with snow on it. That head, that either. that's that's my thoughts exactly. <laughs> that's my thoughts exactly. And I'm going to tell you, um. This is not a new video. This video came out four years ago, but they're just running it today or yesterday. Yeah, it's which just goes to news, show right? you, which just goes to show you that the you can Google alerts on new Bigfoot news, and it is so corrupted with old stuff or reporters that have nothing better to do. There's no running stories for the day. Let's pull up a Bigfoot story. Oh, yeah, they did this. And oh, yeah. yeah. And, and they failed to mention that this was in four years ago. In fact, what did the article say? Snow person. <laughs> That's good. Like, and now an oil worker thinks, oh, well, it's not now. About four years ago, it was now. It's, yeah, and four years right. ago. Well, yeah. I, I would, you know, if there had been something to it, he would have went back and done a, uh, a right, a right. And these guys, up, you know, these guys do not do. I mean, they are such. Let me let me say this. These guys, ninety percent of your journalists are frauds on the internet. Are frauds. The reason why? Well, I'll tell you why. Because I just took a journalism course. Right. Where's the cross checking? How did they miss that this was a forty-year-old video? The video almost has a million views on it already. How did they miss that? Why? Because you're just looking for content, just like the phony Bigfoot channels that repeat posting all the old Bigfoot videos. I At least something to write about today. That's it. Right. So let's just repost something that's innocuous. Doesn't matter if it was 10 years ago, 12 years, if it's on there and we can show a neat picture or give us a link, we're good to go. And it's content. Yeah. And, you know, because of the advertisers on the page, they get the moolah for it. Yeah. But, you know, it does look good. Okay. You can get to looking at this and start, start picking out features like, well, that, I can definitely see an arm there, you know, but, uh, yeah, without a follow-up visit. Uh, right. I think and, 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 and Kaiser thing. Ninja, I agree, but you know what? Anybody that snipes videos like that channel or the channel we dealt with a few months ago, they love sniping videos off of people. And then and then they have the nerve uh, one channel has in particular has the nerve to claim a copyright on it, even though it's not their video. Uh, you know, so hey. Just because you report on it first. <laughs> Doesn't make it yours. <laughs> That's well, right. Very much could be weighted down. Evergreen, right. Absolutely. <clears throat> My takeaway from it's this, you know, does Bigfoot walk around with three inches of snow on his head? Maybe even more? No. I wouldn't Return. think so. Yeah, I wouldn't think so. And on its shoulders and, you know, because you can see white on the, and white. And you can even tell if that was a fluid leg, Right? Why is there snow on the leg? Yeah. Right? So, case closed. Yeah, this is the case of uh, a stump in the woods, more than likely. But, you know, these channels that snipe videos, eventually they're going to snipe a good one. And yeah. then they'll claim, oh, you know, and everybody will go to their channel and watch it. 
But that's the reason why they do it. They don't care about accuracy. They don't care about, and they're hand in hand with these no talent journalists that write these flyby stories without doing any, like literally, oh, this is interesting, but I I got my story done in 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And they're done for the day. (laughs) I've done more work on this video in 20 minutes than he did on 10 minutes. I took the video, we chopped it up, we rendered it, we put it out there, we got the, the, the photo spread out here, put it on a slideshow. I've done, read the story, done more than this journal has done. So what, and the thing is, is they don't care. They don't care about being accurate. You know how many journalists I have written correcting them on dates, times, um, and Trackway says, uh, though animals with, with great insulation can walk for days with snow on their back. You know, that's that's true. But the problem, though, with primates and as like, OK, with humans, I right. don't know for sure if Bigfoot's the same way. But this is where we release most of our heat from the top, very top of our head. So that's why you probably won't. Well, here's cold. the other thing. How can you explain the snow on the shoulders and snow on the yeah. hips or yeah. on the thigh? Yeah, on the you can't. Especially. It's moving around. It's moving, 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 and uh, but uh, that's that's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. You know, if I had been out there and and got this on video, I would have went back like the next day. Right. Yeah. I gotta see what what is it? Is it still there? Take some <laughs> reference pictures, etc. Yeah, right. But, and if it's if it's still there, okay, okay, solved. Yeah, and I don't believe for a minute. And and I know Timberline Camp. Welcome Timberline. Um, says it's a goof in a suit. No, it's not a suit. That's a stump or that's a, a weighted down fir tree or, uh, uh, because of the snow build up on it. I mean, if it was a goof in a snoot, uh, a suit, there would have been no snow on the top of it. <laughs> yeah. It's been sitting there a while. Yeah. Mm. Track white says, uh, there's two videos of the same thing at different times of the year. Okay. Yeah. That would oh, make there, a lot there of sense. you go. Yeah. Kaiju Ninja. Okay. Yeah. Actually, a follow up on Sunny's chat. I'll check that out. I'll check it out. So that, that's the thing. If you see something like this or you get a video or a picture, ah, rock formation. Exactly. There you go. Follow up. There you go. See, and you guys can rock do it. Formation. Exactly. Well, Everybody's already busted this one. Right now, see, the other thing is supposedly May 30th, 2024. For what video? Because uh, the video link that the show put up actually says, um, I got it right here. Yeah. Okay. You know, um, four years ago, 900. Um, watch this. Uh, don't bring it up. <laughs> don't bring it up. No. Okay, there you go. Clip. There you go. Four years ago. So this video is not, yeah, even though the new, maybe. 983,000 views. Oh. Oh. You, know, you know what happened, Chris? I wonder if the guy saw the new video. Mm-hmm. Right? Because it says it was posted May of right? 2024 or whatever. Right. Right? I wonder if if he saw the new video and got the dates confused. Possible. Possible. Try to give them the benefit. I try to give everybody the benefit of the doubt, you know, but uh, more likely this is probably a case where a guy wanted to get done with his work day in about 10 minutes and then go do something else, head off to the pub or game or whatever guys do. I do not know, but what I do know is that uh, you know, uh, the thing is um, OPR 357 is that once it gets uh, uploaded to say social media, um, uh, anytime somebody says a copy, it changes the metadata. Right. It it changes the metadata. Uh, That's why 
when witnesses come to me and, and, and try to PM me their Bigfoot photos on Facebook, right, through Facebook Messenger or they're posting it, I always ask them to send it to me via email, and I want the original file. I don't want something that's been cropped. I don't want something that's been lightened or edited. I want the original file. Send it to my email. <laughs> and, and you you would, uh, yep, that's stumpity, stumpity, squat. I remember. So you, you would not believe the number of people that want to send me a picture on Facebook of a Bigfoot, an alleged Bigfoot, but never follow up and send me the picture on email. And there's a couple of reasons why. Number one is that they're trying to hide the metadata. Because it's well known to the hoaxers now that, you know, you put it on Facebook, the metadata is scrubbed. The only thing you'll get is the time and date it was uploaded to Facebook. Number two is if you take a screen capture of somebody else's Bigfoot picture and put it up on Facebook and say it's your own, you obviously can't email it to somebody, can you? Yeah. That's that's number two. Yeah. Um, and that's usually, you know, but if you want validation, you want vindication, you want somebody to investigate it, then you would send, and you're truly wanting that, and you take a legitimate photo, guess what you're going to do? You're going to email me that photo. Yeah. Now, I've had a couple of guys over years that, that I don't think they were... Um, Ah, I've got mail. Thank you. I, I well, will. I remember uh, I sent Steve a video one time and he contacted me and said, Hey, why is this dated 1981? I said, I have no idea. <laughs> I, said, I took this on the, the 6th of March or whatever, you know, 2010. I have no idea. And I got to look in, well, my jazzy camcorder. Okay. Uh, every time if you take the batteries out and put new batteries in, you had to go through and physically set up the date like on a VCR, okay? And I never did do that. So every video I made every, with that little jazzy camcorder always said uh, 1981 or something like that. You remember what I'm talking about, don't you, Steve? I can't remember. It was <laughs> just whatever date the chips uh, had on it, 1981. So I'm looking at this other... I gotcha. Cool. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. Yeah. You know what? Maybe we'll take a look at that for the evidence review next week. Not the same. Uh, it's not the same. Uh, hmm. Can't wait to see that. But you know, you gotta admit, it does look interesting for a stump squatch. Yeah, well, now it's looking It's looking like, if I'm getting this right, this is a, um, you know what I mean? It looks like a stump. It doesn't look like a Bigfoot. And even if it's a guy in a suit or a stump, it doesn't matter. It's not real. And that's the that's the important thing. We can agree it's not real. Yeah. The, the minutia to it is really irrelevant at this point, I would say. Um, you know, it's kind of like the guy who robs the store. He ro robbed it for a good reason or a bad reason. It's really, it's really moot. He robbed the store. So that's the way I'm kind of looking at this. Yeah. Anita's got a good point here, too. She says, uh, I bet it's discouraging for new folks coming into Sasquatch Arena to watch some places only to soon find out hoaxing or mis misinformation. Yeah. And a lot and, of that yeah. stuff, uh, all the, a lot of the old stuff gets re refurbished. <laughs> uh, they, what's old is new again, it seems like. Right, right. And, you know, the sad thing about it is that, you know, people that are really jazzed about the Bigfoot mystery, a lot of times we'll turn a channel like this away because we're reporting the hoaxes and we're showing people hoaxes right. because the, the real stuff is so far and few between. Um, yeah. But yeah, you're right. Uh, uh, that channel that we're talking about, Timberline, is a, a no bueno. What a coincidence. There's a lot of other channels with dash cams in it. So let me dig into that 
perhaps for an expose, because now it is on my radar. And I know uh, uh, Brent over at the Tall Ones did stuff on the same channel a little bit ago. So I'm going to try to dig and see if I can't find, uh, come at it from another angle, which is usually what I do. Um, so, you know, did it really come from a guy in, uh, well, you know what, we're going to, we're going to, we're going to check some things out. We're going to, we're going to bust open the books here and, and see if we can't, uh, get down to the nitty gritty on that. So I think that would be a fun, fun expose either for a, uh, uh, you know, a long form video, or maybe we'll do it live. I don't know yet. We'll see what happens. But, uh, that would be fun. Right. <laughs> yeah, Gary. Yeah, Gary. no. One has face to face encounter. One will see where no others will. <laughs> and you know why that? And you know why that is, Gary? It's called post traumatic stress disorder. They see one for real, and it takes them. Now they see them everywhere. You know, so under understand that. And and PTSD affects people differently. Some people will go out and buy ten thousand trail cams. And, and look for it. Every movement, every sound becomes Bigfoot. Or people will start seeing them in in pictures everywhere or videos everywhere. There is no Bigfoot in, in that, that video. None. Zip. Null. The channel is known to put out phony videos, Gary. So just well, hang in there, buddy. I appreciate you coming here every week and, and being a, a great subscriber to the channel. But, I, you know, I would love for you to just open your eyes on that, that this... You know, uh, you're wrong, uh, people, because they see one and they, oh, all of a sudden they have a special connection. No, no. Again, well, that's that's part of anthropocentrism. That's also trying to come to grips with with seeing one. Well, isn't it? maybe I'm special. There's another point. There's another point you got to consider, though, Steve. Yes, sir. Okay. Once you see a creature, you see these creatures, and you know that they're in the woods, and you start to learn their tricks your perception of the woods will change. If you see a little movement out of the corner of your eye, before you saw a creature, you'll just ignore it. You'll, you'll maybe glance over. What was that? I didn't see. But, but you know, you know, Chris, the thing is, is if you spend enough time in the woods, right. you will have the same perception. Yeah. And you will see other things, not just Bigfoot. In fact, most of the time, you don't see Bigfoot at all. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I've done that. Nine. I've sat yeah. and I've sat and I've watched. And I'm, oh, there's a there's a chipmunk. Oh, there's a field mouse. Right. Oh. right. And right. you're sitting there. I mean, you don't have to see a Bigfoot to understand that. Right. Um. But uh, like, like I said, that that you know, if you're seeing Bigfoot in all these pictures, it's time to take a step back, take a deep breath, and reinvent right. the guy. Bigfoot on the brain. Right. Well, I, Right. And it's it's not it's not anything bad, but it's something you got to learn to deal with because it, it, it it's is traumatic. A, it's a trauma it's a traumatic thing going on, and um, understand that that you know why do I see Bigfoot in all these pictures and nobody else does? Why do I go out in the woods and I see Bigfoot everywhere but nobody else does? It's not because you have a special power. It's not because you've seen one. Well, it's actually because you have seen one because you're, you know, you're encountering this PTSD. And if you read the book, Psychology of Bigfoot, you will understand that. Um, and, and what you need to do is, personally, a person needs to talk, sit down, talk to a therapist. They won't make fun of you. Fun of you. Um, they, you will say, listen, I've seen a Bigfoot on this day. And since then, I have seen Bigfoot everywhere. And then, and, and they will talk to you and try to get you to, you know, get that out of you and figure out what's going on. Um, you know, I've seen that with people in other fields too. They see a ghost and then they're seeing ghosts everywhere. They see a UFO and then they're seeing UFOs everywhere. Right. Well, yeah, but I think, you know, that perception thing has something to do with it. Yeah, I, I mean, yeah, OPR uh, is right. Um, is same thing with when encountering bears in the woods. Yeah. Every little rustle, you see a bear, and now, now you're 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 paranoid. You're like, oh, I hope that's not another bear. And what was that bear? Yeah, 
Yeah. But, you know, I learned when I had a few encounters back in 2010, I learned that uh, if you spot a little movement out of the corner of your eye and you look over and you don't see anything right away, that doesn't mean you look away and just say, well, it must have been nothing. No, no. Right. You study that area right. closely. <laughs> and, right. And you, you look for telltale signs of a leg or a head right. and then, you know, pay attention. I mean... You know, Gary, you said you've seen Bigfoot four times. That's possible. It's not a crazy amount. It's not ridiculous. I mean, I had one guy, you know, the, the whole nowhere argument. And then when I said, well, I've, I've seen two of them over my course of 25 years. Well, unless you've seen 37 of them, I'm like, oh, one of those. <sighs> you've seen them 37 times. You best be coming back with evidence. Four Please. times, I understand. Yeah, if you've seen 37 of them, you might know that they do exist, but that's about all you know, unless you've been doing some really good observation and behavior studies. You know, but, well, I've but, probably seen over a million cars in my day with all my travels. Yeah. And flights and stuff like that, yeah. but I still don't know how don't to build it. I don't know how to build a transmission no more. <laughs> exactly. You know cars exist. Right, right. and... Uh, <laughs> That's Gary, it. Gary, Gary, don't get mad. You're in caps. Okay, you've seen four. That's excellent. Uh, I'm not saying that you yeah. haven't. Yeah, that that's great, man. I'm actually saying that's possible. Yeah. But when you're saying you have, you know, 38 times, 39 times, and you, you don't have anything in the well, that, was uh, that, that was that other guy, Steve. That's right. Yeah. Right. And that's what I'm explaining. The other guy had like 37, 38. And if you don't have anything in the pocket to prove that you're just a tall tail teller, I'm, I'm sorry. Or you have a problem where you're seeing Bigfoot everywhere. Yeah. The other guy. Yeah. Not the other Gary. guy. Not you, Gary. <laughs> not you, Gary. But, uh, yeah. But, but, but what a great discussion we had, you oh, know, off of that one. Uh, always. One thing. And guess what time it is? It's 957. Right. Uh, That track I said, field mice are fun on thermal. They are. I've seen it jumping around, look like hopping. Wow, what is that? They're even fun on trail camera. I got, I got a couple. I, I got one on a trail camera a couple of times. Yeah. And uh, it's, uh, did, you, did you put that bat uh, video on the on the channel where uh, when we were down on Green River? And you had um. Your, is it still on the channel? I don't know. I'll have to, I'll have to check. Well, for it. Anyway, oh, I, we, it was pitch black, and Steve had these night vision. I uh, can actually. I do. It's in our um, very early uh, one of our earlier videos we did. It's it was when I was ago, yeah. when I was testing the night owl. Uh, that night vision I did, I did, binocular. I did, yeah, I was. I was showing. Yeah, those were cool. Now it's not thermal, but it's night vision, so it's just like green, but you can see. Now, when we were down there, it was pitch black. Okay. Right, right. And Steve was looking through the binoculars, the night vision binoculars, and, you know, he caught a bat uh, flying back and forth, back and forth. over the river. It was like, wow. He was getting his dinner and all the mosquitoes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And he, was, mosquitoes. he was just swooping and swooping and swooping. Yeah. All right. Time for a dumb joke. Lay it on me. How how can you tell when a moth farts? How? It flies straight. <laughs> oh, okay. All right, dumb joke. Okay. That was at least third grade level there. That was pretty good. Pretty good. I'm trying. <laughs> I'm trying. Oh, man. Okay, I think I've had enough. <laughs> yeah, we get back to the... Uh... You know, uh, well, now we're here. So anyway, and I know there's a bunch of kids that watch this show right now that are laughing their asses. Right yeah, yeah. But anyway, folks, uh, we will <laughs> catch you here Sunday night, a couple of days from now. Yeah. Everybody be safe. I got a fun night. I, I am going to a retirement party tomorrow. All right. Uh, and I'm actually meeting up with uh, our good buddy in chat, Pat Collins. All so, right, Pat. Good. Yep. Yeah. So Pat has a good friend that lives, one of his best friends, lives three doors down from me. Mm -hmm. So I end up, and we end up chit-chatting now every once in a while, too. So yeah. it, it is. Very cool. Small world. You know yeah. What it is. Yep. Yep. 
and that uh, the bird clock means it's 10 o'clock yeah and thanks everybody for we're out of here us. we appreciate hey, everybody, you. have a good weekend and we'll have the fourth of july show this sunday right here on squat tv everybody be safe stay healthy god bless we'll catch you all in a uh, couple of days. We thank you for being here with us on Squatch DTV. If you haven't taken the time yet, please hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. And oh yes, hit that notification bell too. We don't want you to miss anything. If you really like our content, you should consider becoming a member and it's really inexpensive and a great way to support not only the show, but Honest Bigfoot research. Everyone have a great week. Be safe and God bless. We will see you all here next time on Squatch DTV. Keep on squatching.